I'm making this video to ask the question, when does involuntary psychiatry become torture? Now, I think it's pretty clear cut uh, morally and ethically that someone who is not psychotic should, you know, for adults who are not, who are not psychotic should uh, have the right to engage in suicide respected. Now, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm promoting suicide or think it's good. In fact, I think suicide is tragic and probably morally wrong in many cases. And I think it would be great if there are no suicides. I think it would be great if suicide stopped happening. Um, but, you know, I just think we should not lock up adults who are going to engage in it pri privately. Um, I think we should use kindness and persuasion to try and stop it. Now... In conversations with other individuals, the best sort of rebuttal to the idea that suicide should be respected as a human right um, and that we should use force to try and stop it would be in the case of, of a psychotic adult. So, you know, let's say an adult who says, um, you know, space aliens want me to stop eating and, you know, them not eating will result in death or... Uh, the Holy Spirit wants me to kill myself, so, um, you know, I can see my ancestor sooner. So somebody who's psychotic, who we would say is having a break in reality. And again, things that relate to things like the Holy Spirit do almost cross the line of into theological boundaries. So then the question arises, well, when should we respect somebody's personal theological beliefs even if we completely disagree with them. So let's use the case of things like space aliens, um, which is less theological. So, you know, oh, space aliens are telling me I should stop eating, or space aliens are telling me that I should do myself in so I can be with, you know, the space aliens in heaven sooner. So that sort of thing that we might consider psychotic. Um, you know, so that might be a decent case. You know, rather than somebody who's just saying my life is horrible, I want to end it because it's so horrible, you know, I lost all my money, my family hates me, um, you know, or I lost all my family <laughs> and my uh, coworkers hate me, you know, something like that where somebody is, you know, even their situation may be really unfortunate and there's a chance that they could turn it around, and, you know, improve their relationships and improve their financial situation or improve their, their lot in life. Uh, but we wouldn't say that they're having a break with reality, just that they're having a really hard time. Um, so, you know, that would be maybe a depressed person versus a psychotic person. So, you know, when does, so let's say it is right to, you know, try and treat somebody who is having a break with reality, then at what point does that become torture? So in the sense of, um, you know, you can't legally involuntarily treat someone except in cases of, you know, imminent threat. And I think that's pretty much true in all cases in the sense of, you could lock someone up for um, having a plans mean an intention of uh, killing themselves, but you couldn't actually force them to take any psychiatric drugs unless it was an imminent danger. That's my understanding of, of pretty much the laws in all of the United States. Um, and I could be wrong there, and if I am, please correct me um, you know, in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's the case, that again, you can pretty much lock someone up if they have a plans mean an intention of killing themselves, you know, in a psychiatric ward, you could have them locked in a hospital, but you could only force them to take a drug, like through an injection, if there was, you know, they were imminently trying to harm themselves, and that drug, you know, is arguably the only thing that would, would stop them, you know, like a chemical straitjacket, forcing them to take that. You know, so when does that become torture? So let's say somebody has a psychosis where they say space, space aliens want them to not eat, or space aliens just want them to hurt themselves. And we say, oh yeah, that's definitely good to lock them up because they're not thinking rationally. So, you know, it, what, let's say, you know, they are locked up, they agree to take some drug, you know, they're locked up against their will, they agree to try some antipsychotic drug, which can have pretty horrible side effects. It's my, it's my understanding that some have side effects like, you know, uh, can lead to diabetes or weight gain um, or <laughs> neuroleptic malignant syndrome, so on and so forth. You can look them all up for yourself, but I think some are pretty bad. And, you know, at what point does that become torture? You know, let's say their psychosis doesn't remit, um, you know, they have to be sent to like a state hospital. Um, 
you know, when, when does, again, when does locking them up, you know, violate their human rights if they've not broken a law? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when, uh, when does forcing treatment on them become torture, forcing them to take drugs because like, of like an imminent danger or, you know, force feeding them with a, uh, you know, force feeding them, when does that become torture? And I think that's a great question to ask. I think it's a very important question to ask. Because if you know if you think it's, it's right to lock psychotic people up who are a danger to themselves, you know when does that become torture? You know is it after a week if you know if they've been forced to be locked up after a week, um, you know a month, a year, ten years, a hundred years? You know, um, personally, you know, and I tend to lean towards uh, the Sazian view that you know maybe. We, if somebody wants to kill themselves, even for a bad reason, we should let them, and still we should only use persuasion and kindness, which I, I don't know if Saz really says that, but I personally think, again, it would be great if we could not have, if we could have no suicides whatsoever, but, you know, if we start saying, oh, in some cases it's all right to lock people up because they're a danger to themselves, because they might say space aliens want them to do themselves in, um, that might be a horrible reason. Um, but, you know, maybe they actually have other reasons they're not saying, and they just simply use space aliens as an excuse, you know, whether they truly believe it or not, um, and they sort of get fixated on that. It's hard to say, but let's say they really believe it, then, you know, again, in what case does that start becoming sort of torturous to lock them up and try and treat them um, against their will? You know, if, if their psychosis is treatment resistant, um, which is my understanding that in many cases, psychosis will be treatment resistant, so to speak. So when does that start becoming torture? Again, after three days, a week, a month, a year, ten years, a hundred years? Um, and I tend to think probably sooner than later. And let's say it is a good thing to lock them up, you know, to stop them from being da danger to themselves, then I would be tempted to say for somebody who's psychotic, probably sooner than later it starts becoming uh, immoral. Um, and perhaps right away even. So, but again, we may all, may all differ on that, but I definitely think again, Suicide should be respected as a human right for people who are not psychotic, for, for adults who are not psychotic. Um, again, even though I think it's tragic and unfortunate and likely in many cases morally wrong. And also let me make it clear that in, in cases where somebody is a danger to, to others, you know, that should be treated criminally. It's, it's, it's illegal to be in imminent danger to others. That's my understanding. So to treat it psychiatrically uh, is, I think, sort of a type of false mercy. So um, anyway... Uh, and just be, and I'll end this pretty soon. But let me just reiterate: I'm, I don't think suicide's a good thing. I, I'm not promoting it. I don't think anybody should do it. I simply think we shouldn't use force and coercion to stop individuals from engaging in it. And I think we should use kindness and persuasion instead. And I think if we really ever want to truly see all suicides stop happening, we need to rely on kindness and persuasion and not force and coercion. You know, and locking people up in psychiatric hospitals I think qualifies as force and coercion so anyway thanks for watching please subscribe watch my other videos visit my websites and uh, have a wonderful morning evening afternoon or night whenever and wherever you may be